It's time for another case study, and we've got a different one for you today, an RPL that we flipped. RPL meaning a re-performing loan, a SR in this case, senior position lien, and flip meaning we sold it to a cash flow investor. Now, unlike some of our other deals with non-performing loan flips that were then brought re-performing with a modification agreement with the borrower and then sold, this was a little less value add and a little bit more arbitrage, meaning we earned the spread between what we bought it for and what we sold it for. And we'll explain how we did that very soon here. So single family residential property was our secured collateral. The taxes are current. The borrower is making sure to pay those property taxes. And that leaves us with a full equity loan. In other words here, a single family residential property fair market value or FMV of $200,000 minus the current taxes leaves us $200,000 of equity. And it is full equity because our principal balance here, the UPV is $92,688. So that leaves us with an equity coverage of 2.158. That's just taking the equity divided by the principal amount. And since it's greater than one, it is a full equity loan. And the CLTV here, which means exactly the same thing is less than one at 46.34%. It is full equity as well. The reason we break it down both ways, more importantly for junior position liens is because the equity coverage shows us the equity perspective from the investor side and the CLTV combines both all of the liens on the property, the first and the second, gives us the perspective of equity from the borrower's position. So sometimes you'll see equity coverage is an equity account, but CLTV is a negative equity or a partial equity deal because the borrower has additional liens on the property. In this case though, the borrower and the investor have the same perspective here. There is absolutely something to lose from the borrower's end and the investor has leverage here. Borrower, of course, is gonna keep paying this reperforming loan. So digging in a bit more, we bought this loan for $61,000 as a reperforming loan. So we bought it with payments already coming in of $764 per month. That gives us an annual return of about 15%. So this is a great deal to buy and hold, but we actually were able to flip it to earn an additional proceed and increase our internal rate of return, which we'll see soon here. So our annual return, we just simply calculated payment times 12 divided by cost basis. And as I mentioned, we sold it in seven months for $73,000. So let's actually look at this perspective from the buyer's side. They bought it for 73,000, which was now 78% of the principal amount. And at that 764 per month, they're earning 12.57%. So this is where I mentioned that arbitrage opportunity. We bought it for 15%, we sold it for around 12.5%. So we earn the spread, in this case, buying for 61,000 and selling for 73,000, not to mention the payments we collected in those seven months along the way, which we'll break down for you in the internal rate of return in a minute here. So same thing, the 12 times monthly payment divided by your purchase price is your annual return. All right, so the story on this one. This particular deal, we bought from a loan sale advisor as a one-off purchase. This wasn't part of a big package of loans. This was an individual asset that we negotiated for that 15% annual return at acquisition. There was a little bit of an issue with the paperwork and we did have to have the borrower sign an intent of the modification agreement, a clarification of the intent. Uh, but other than that, it was pretty tight in order. We had a payment history going in to show that those monthly payments were consistent. The borrower is actually paying a bit more than that $764 monthly payment every month. So they were chipping away at the principal a little bit faster, which at the end of the day, we like to see it because we're getting a little bit more than the balance every month, a little bit more than the PNI principal plus interest amount. So we held that loan for seven months. We collected the payments. We built up our own seasoning with our loan servicer before then flipping the deal, which we'll talk about in just a minute here with the actual internal rate of return first. So this is looking at the IRR that we earned, and then we'll look at the investor's IRR. So the way we do this pretty simply is take the total amount collected minus the cost basis divided by the cost basis to give us an ROI and then divide that by the amount of time it took expressed in years. So $73,000 is what we earned when we sold the loan and then add to that $744 a month times seven months. And the reason we reduced $20 off of that monthly payment amount is for our monthly servicing fee of $20 per month. So that leaves us with around $78,000 of 
income minus our $61,000 investment in the loan divided by our, by our $61,000 investment gives us the ROI of 28.2%. Now, because we did that in seven months, then we can actually put in the denominator here 0.583, which is just seven divided by 12 to express that amount of time in an annual basis. So that gives us an internal rate of return here of 48.36%. So pretty great to do a deal faster because it increases that internal rate of return. And if you can put that capital back to work, you can compound it within just a year or less time. So takeaways here, there is an opportunity for arbitrage. We often talk about value add on this channel, how you can buy a non-performing loan, negotiate a, a modification agreement, and then sell that as a re-performing loan. And of course, the returns are much higher in that capacity because you are adding value. And that's so important in any real estate space. It's not about speculation, it's about value add. But something kind of in between speculation and value add is arbitrage. And when you can find investors who are willing to earn a lower rate of return than you were willing to earn, then you can make that spread. So in this case, we were able to work with an investor who was just a passive person. They wanted to keep it in their self-directed IRA to earn those monthly payments and earn 12% for their retirement account. We're more active investors trying to hit that 15 to 30% returns. So when we could flip this and increase our internal rate of return, selling to somebody who was then earning 12%, 12.5% on their money in their self-directed IRA on a passive basis, that was a win-win all around. And what you'll see here, very interestingly, is their internal rate of return was actually even stronger. So let's do the same calculation here. The total amount collected, um, they collected a 90,000, and we're kind of making an assumption here that they paid off the loan in 12 months, that the borrower made 12 monthly payments, and then they paid a lump sum, probably through a refinance to the investor's IRA account to get the loan released. So $90,000 is the amount of principal balance left over after 12 monthly payments. It's actually a little bit more than that because in that beginning of the amortization schedule, they're paying about $130 of that 764 monthly payment just towards interest and the or just towards principal and the rest was all interest. So over $600 a month was just interest that was occurring on this loan that that investor could be collecting. So they took 12 monthly payments of 744, we reduced that $20 monthly servicing fee, plus the $90,000 that they received in the full payoff after a year, and then minus the $73,000 investment divided by the $73,000 investment was a 35.5% ROI on the deal, which is also the internal rate of return because the denominator in this case is one. It took a full year, so your ROI equals your internal rate of return in this case. So interesting to see here that even though they're only earning 12% on their money on a monthly basis, when you take into account that full payoff after a year, the internal rate of return was much higher. Now, I did estimate this based on a 12 year or 12 month to pay off, it could have taken two years, it could have taken three, but in general, borrowers do not pay out the full term of their loans. Most borrowers, at least before the interest rates started going up, would refinance or pay off their loans because they moved to a new property within about seven years. So when you take that 12%, 12.5% uh, annual return that you're earning, and then have a lump sum at the end of seven years that increases your internal rate of return to more than 12 and a half. And if it's done in a year, in this case, it more than doubles it to 35%. So that's today's case study. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions below. And of course, this was a new one talking about arbitrage as opposed to value add. So I hope you learned something new and I'll see you on next Wednesday's video.